Hey, thanks for tuning in to Dan Warner Media. My name is Dan Warner. Today we're going to be talking about self-tapes, specifically what makes an actor stand out in their, uh, <clears throat> in their self-tape submission. And I know there's a, lot of, uh, there's a lot of videos out there and there's a lot of opinions about uh, self-taping, uh, but I've spent some time with some casting directors and there is uh, one common thing that all of them talk about and it seems simple and a lot of the things I talk about seem simple, but um, it turns out they're not so simple. It's, 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 speaking of simple, it's, it's difficult for actors to be simple, first of all. Most of the time they want to act. They want to show the casting director or the director or whatever scene they're in, their teacher, they want to show them how they're acting. <clears throat> That's the wrong way to go, in my humble opinion, uh, 20 years in this business. <clears throat> what I've seen consistently over and over are the people who are the most simple are the most believable. Because, you know, when you're when you're talking to someone, when you're talking to a friend, when you're talking to a colleague, uh, anyone, um, the conversation is like this. You're very simple. You're not overdoing it uh, unless you are telling a really dramatic story. Um, but for the most part, regular conversations uh, are very simple. And it's difficult for actors to be and stay simple. Uh, obviously, if there's a scene where you're in a fight with somebody or you're arguing, you know, you can get angry. But uh, and you, you guys have probably heard this in a lot of my other videos, but if you are being a real person in a real place, having a real experience, whether you're sad, angry, um, slightly upset, jealous, uh, or just having a conversation, if you approach those feelings and those scenes and those auditions on tape as you would in your real life, bring some of you and your real life experience into uh, this dialogue, into this scene, uh, it's going to come off uh, a lot better. Uh, the casting directors say, more than anything, um, be simple and be alive in the scene. That means active listening. And that means when, when you're not speaking, when the other person is speaking, your reader is speaking and they're giving their dialogue, that you are listening, that you're really listening to them. That means you're alive in the scene instead of you just looking into the camera waiting for your lines. Uh, they can spot that a mile away. If they see you and it looks like you're just waiting for your lines and then you spew your lines, they spew theirs, you spew yours, you're not really alive in the scene. And that comes with preparation. Um, rehearsing, rehearsing, rehearsing with this until until it's really in you. And again, you know, don't do it until you get it right. Do it until you can't get it wrong. And I've said that before, but I, I just can't stress enough that preparation takes the pressure off of luck. And if you are super prepared and you're very alive in your scene, um, you don't have to do much. <clears throat> Excuse me. You don't have to do much. Um, and that's what they say, <clears throat> that you don't have to do uh, a lot if you're really alive in the scene. If you are vested in what that other person has to say, you know, you're, you're, you don't have to, you know, you don't need to do too, you don't need props. You don't need, uh, you know, elaborate wardrobe, you know, simple wardrobe that fits the character. Props, you don't really need those if, you know, a pair of glasses or something like that. I had an audition one time and I was supposed to play an older guy. And so it was a Zoom audition and I'm uh, talking to the, the session runner <clears throat> in, the, in the Zoom session. And I said, uh, he goes, okay, you want to try this? And I said, yeah, hold on. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, he, and I put on these glasses and I said, uh, glasses or no glasses? He said, he goes, you don't need the glasses. Let your acting do the work. And I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. Uh, okay. Got it. And this is after years and years of, you know, doing this. And I still have to be reminded from time to time. It's like, yeah, you don't need the prop. Let your acting uh, do the work. Um, I, one acting or one casting director tells a story about how uh, they got an audition on tape and the person was uh, supposed to get shot. And so what they added in is a little gunshot sound effect. And it wasn't big and it wasn't overdone, but they thought, oh, that's interesting. 
Uh, let's have a look at this guy. Um, you know, little clever things like that are good to do. I am not condoning going over the top and using sound effects or trickery or anything else. Like I said, let your acting do the work. But a little gunshot when he was supposed to get shot, that sounds to me like, I think that would be pretty cool. Um, he ended up booking the job. Um, he added a, a gunshot. <laughs> or however it goes. And I thought, well, that's clever. And it's not over the top. And again, listen, please don't take this as, oh, I need to do something clever with every audition on tape. You don't. What they're saying is, when I say they, I mean the casting directors, is be simple. Let your acting do the work. Be alive in the scene. Be a real person in a real place, having a real experience. That will make your auditions on tape stand out because everyone else is doing the opposite. They're doing over the top. They're doing wardrobe, this and that, a hat, glasses, glass of scotch, whatever, you know, a bird on their shoulder. No, no, none of that stuff. Um, continue to crank out good work. Be alive in your scene. Be alive in the, uh, in the audition that you're submitting on tape. Uh, and continue to submit good work. Now, listen, <clears throat> you could submit five auditions on tape and go, I was alive in all of those. I did great. And they did not. Uh, I didn't get a call back. I didn't get the job. Um, so I've got a, uh, another video you should look at called 10 Reasons Why You Didn't Get the Job. Um, just because you didn't get the job doesn't mean you didn't do a great job. And it doesn't mean the casting director isn't going to remember you. It just means they wanted someone taller, shorter, fatter, skinnier, balder, more hair, whatever the case may be. Uh, and it doesn't have anything to do with your read. Um, so just stay the course, keep cranking out good work, uh, and good things will happen. If you got any good things out of this video, hit the like button down below. If you have questions or comments about anything that uh, I've covered, leave them in the questions and comments section below. Um, like, share, you know, do cartwheels. Um, oh, good. There's my, there's a telemarketer calling me. Okay. So also when you do videos, you should turn off all electronic devices, uh, any alarms, alerts, or any of that. So you don't have to redo, uh, the stuff that you already did. <laughs> Take it from me. Cause I just had to redo this anyway. Um, if you have any suggestions about anything that you would like me to cover, also leave them down there in the comment section. Also visit danwarnermedia.com. Um, I do private coaching. I've got tutorials. I'm going to be having uh, multiple workshops uh, up on my site soon. So continue to visit and go back and you will be enlightened beyond belief. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'll see you next week on another episode of um, Gunsmoke. Yeah, I didn't even really watch Gunsmoke, but, you know, it's an old show from the 70s. I'm trying to keep a theme going here. Mm.